hello and welcome back and today I'm going to show you how to create a remarkably secure yet insanely user friendly remote access portal between you and your Synology NAS using Tailscale. In today's video we're going to go through what Tailscale is, what are the alternatives that it's actually better than and of course show you how to do it. So if you already know what Tailscale is there should be a time bar stamp along the bottom that you can skip ahead to so you can go straight through the installation process for your Synology. NAS. But for the rest of you, let me explain. I started using Tailscale myself for my own private NASes long before I used it here in the studio. Um, around about July, August of last year. And although I hoped to make a video about it, I just got bombarded. And frankly, I just plain forgot. And it wasn't until um, earlier, uh, I think around about this month, when I made this video, 10 Dumb Questions about NAS that aren't actually that dumb, until David M here actually did highlight to me, why am I not using Tailscale? And I was saying, I am. I just haven't got around to it. But he's right. I should make a video about this. It's a great little service. So, what we're going to be doing is going through it. So, the first thing first, what is it? Well, nice and simple. If you've ever used TeamViewer, it's quite a similar logic to that, but far, far more useful. When you are trying to access your NAS, predominantly most users will access it in one of two ways. They'll use things like Synology Assistant to find the NAS on their local area network, and they'll patch in via a local IP. That's within the network. But the minute you step out of that network, you join another Wi-Fi network, you're in a coffee shop, you're in another building, you're just on another internet connection, you're not on that same network anymore. Um, unless you're going to use VLANs, but that's a different subject for another day. Anyway, you're on a different network, you want to tap into the NAS, so within, you have to create a portal outside of that network to get into the NAS, but of course we all know about ransomware and all the things that have happened in the last few years, opening up doorways to your NAS from the outside is fraught with risk. And one of the most common ways people do that is with port forwarding. Now, when they go into their NAS device, all too often, they'll create the means to configure the network port on their router <clears throat> and leave a nice opening that they know of, they'll restrict it as much as possible, to enter into that NAS. Alternatively, you can use Synology's own Quick Connect and Synology account um, that you create and then bounce off of Synology server, which is an encrypted pathway, but performance will drop. Now, where this differs, when it comes to port forwarding, when you start playing around with the settings on your system, one, it's requires some technical nows, but it also requires you to do a bit of configuration outside of the NAS as well, because you need to know the port you're opening, you need to make sure it's not too uh, broad, that it's findable, and at the same time, make sure that the devices you're using, your client devices, be they phones, tablets, whatever, have the facility to find or at least be configured towards that open port that you've created. Now, with port forwarding, as long as you're quite, you know, exact about what you're doing and not open up all the ports unnecessarily or you're using apps that at least authenticate in the middle during that port opening process it is relatively secured but if you don't know what you're doing you can so easily open up ports that have no level of security or barrier or authentication multi layered or not in between which means you might open up a port which has no lock on the door now you can use VPNs. A VPN, such as using Synology's own VPN server software, VPN server allows you to turn the NAS into a doorway that is secured with uh, randomized elements to it, but ultimately, this will allow you to create a specialized, constantly changing doorway, which a lot of businesses use, so they can register into a server or a database and not have their identity traced, or if they use it in different locations, or on a public uh, Wi-Fi connection, or anything like that, or that the connection is intercepted in the middle, that it's useless. But of course, once you use a VPN, much like using Synology's own Quick Connect service, it will drop that performance. Indeed, any external access will always drop in performance part the way down to uh, matters like um, the authentication and the encryption in the middle and the DPAC repack, but also because of things like distance. Now, where does tail scale fit into all of this? Well, nice and simple, much again like Team Viewer, unlike everyone coming in via that single point, tail scale binds devices. So you create your tail scale account, which again can be done for free, but if you're going to use it for business with lots of devices, you are going to have to pay. I think it's like five, ten nicker a month. We'll look at that later. And what you do is you assign your devices an identity within tail scale. And then from there, you can bind those devices to be able to communicate and create a 
port, um, a tunnel, a portal, if you will, between those devices that is encrypted, that is as safe as the other methods we've mentioned. And again, there are pros and cons throughout. And ultimately, you can create a mid network. And all of these mid networks here do not require you to do port forwarding. They do not require you to knock around with your firewall and be very precise. What happens is you are bouncing off a tower scout in the middle, not dissimilar to what you saw on the Synology access point there. But instead of it being just Solanas Unatis, or if you're using TeamViewer and it's only TeamViewer machines, TauScout has an incredibly broad range of supported devices. And that's why it's important. Because when you're utilizing it, unlike an, if you're using a VPN, where the VPN is still passing through the router point, or if you're going to use the NAS as a, a VPN router in the middle, with um, trail scale, all these devices can be binded in many, many different ways from within that central account. And at any time, you can just disconnect them if you choose, or make sure that one device can contact many where some other devices have got very limited scope. And it's all done via a single overview. And that's really it for Tauspal. Now, the good, other good thing is Synology, fair play to them, have included Tailscout on their range of supported applications. It is a third-party app, and you have to go down past all the first-party applications there to the bottom, but you will find Tailscale. It's right down there next to TeamViewer. And again, it's one click install. Once you've installed it, it will open in a new tab, because the other thing you're going to need is client applications or the individual devices that you're going to connect. So that's enough about what Tau Scout is. And for those of you from at the beginning of the video, let's go into how, um, how to set one up and what it looks like. So when you've installed TauScale on your Synology NAS, go ahead and click Open. When you've clicked Open, a new tab will appear inviting you to create a Time uh, a TailScale account. This is going to be the central account that will allow you to oversee all of the devices and one that you're going to bind that Synology NAS to. Now, there's many ways to sign in. I'm going to go ahead and use our disposable uh, NAS Compares account there. So we're going to go ahead there, dump it in. And then, as you can see, we've got the identity for the device, and we're now binding that device to this account here. So it's authenticated, and there you go. And shortly, it will redirect us to the Tau Scout administration there, whereupon it will show that Synology NAS has been connected there. So now we've authenticated and we've added that Synology to this Tau Scout account. So the next thing you're going to need to do is select a, a tower scale download for your appropriate device so in my case i'm going to be using a windows laptop for this i could have used a phone or a multitude of other devices but for that what you need to do is go into the download section and then select the os that you're going to be utilizing for your client hardware so in my case it's going to be windows i go ahead i click download and it will go into my downloads area there i've already downloaded it in advance though so next we'll make our way in and we'll start installing TauScale. Might go black there for you guys on screen. So when it's installing, it's a very straightforward installation there. And of course, afterwards, it will invite you to um, go ahead and um, authenticate with that account information you created earlier on. Click Install. It's a very straightforward installation there. Um, and again, this will be very similar to those of you that are going to be using Mac. And of course, there is the mobile version as well, which allows you to add even more devices. But at that point, you want to think about maybe if you're using too many devices, you may have to go for the paid subscription. But for now, we click close. And on the bottom right of the screen, you can head down and you will find the Tau Scout icon there in the bottom right of the screen. Right click and click log in. From there, a new tab will open shortly, which will allow you to uh, start the install, uh, the setup and the binding of your client machine and your TauScale account. It pops up there on screen, and as you can see, now the PC has been added to that TauScale list of devices. We click Connect, and now it will show us two devices that are binded together on our TauScale account. Once again, give it a few moments while it updates the registry of devices on your account and returns to our console listing. Now, as you can see, we've now got both the NAS and a desktop PC. So the next thing we're going to do is log in via a different connection. So as you can see, here is my Wi-Fi connection and I am connected to the NAS on the local area network there. As you can see, there on the Synology system. So to show this is working, the next thing we're going to do is disconnect from that connection. We're now going to create a secondary internet connection utilizing a Wi-Fi hotspot here on my mobile. 
In just a moment, when that loads up, we'll use this Wi-Fi hotspot to connect this laptop to the internet, and now we're gonna use Tailscale to log right back into that NAS. So while it does that there in the background, we're just gonna put my phone up there lovely and high. And as you can see, we're now slowly connecting and now we're connected to that internet connection there. That connection appears to still be connected to the office Wi-Fi. So we'll disconnect that there while it tries to log straight in. And should sooner enough, what we'll be able to do is if we try and refresh that, it will time out. If we go back into the Synology Assistant tool and search the local area network, for that NAS, you'll see that it's not able to find that Synology NAS at all. It's trying, but it's failing. But meanwhile, on my machines tab over here, what I'm able to do is take the identity and we'll refresh that page just to be on the safe side. And then from that refresh, it will so show our list of devices. And then what we can do is go ahead, copy that identity there on that network identity. We log it in there. And boom, we can now log into our NAS remotely. Now, it's worth highlighting while we're going in here, and we're now able to access this NAS via Tailscal that we still need to take extra precautions. Whether you're going to be using a VPN still, it's up to you. That will affect performance ever so slightly. The second thing to bear in mind is you may have noticed we're still running on an insecure connection. So it never hurts to upgrade a lot of those connections despite everything we've done thus far by adding things like a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate or adding a further VPN from Synology's own list of ranges or increasing some of your security anyway. Because remember, if someone gains access to this Tailscout account, although there will be levels of authentication you can use, such as two-step authentication and more, this, this, this doesn't negate you from all the other things you should be doing to secure your NAS. But once again, as you go from this point, you can go ahead and start installing Tailscale client applications on your mobile devices, other laptops and more, and allowing you to be able to tap into all of these devices without having to go through routers, uh, uh, firewalls, and going through uh, port forwarding there. But just make sure to still keep things secure, still use two-step authentication, still use certificates, and still use all of the safe working practices of your own network attached storage device and if, if you're in any doubt always go ahead and use the security advisor on your Synology NAS to go ahead and scan your system for any potential vulnerabilities these can go from as little as weak passwords all the way up to other security prohibitive measures you may have done but this has been how to utilize Tailscal on your Synology NAS why it's good what you can do with it, and we will be looking at other NAS devices very soon. Do stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Other than this, there should be guides linked in the description as well as other setup guides for Synology in 2023 coming very, very soon. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.